March. Day one of training. Respect. You show me respect and stop writing trashy articles about me, then I'll show you respect. I'm a man. I listen. I'm not afraid to die. I'm not afraid to waste my life because when I die, I'm going to paradise. And I'm not worried, so I'm in a hurry to Mike Tyson has come again for Jake Paul. Not to argue or trade words, but to give him a stern warning ahead of their bout on July 20th. Yeah. yeah. Oh, these you know you're a real prick though, right? What? What's the matter? You're a real prick. <laughs> you've hit me with all these disgusting pictures. Oh, no, but uh, if you don't want to comment on it, don't. I, I mean, will I'm comment on but you're a prick. No, no, what? no I didn't. I'm just trying to... We're, we're trying to work, if you don't want to comment on it, you don't no, have I to. Comment. Mike Tyson has sent warnings to Jake Paul as regards making posts and comments about him or sending messages to him. Tyson has warned Jake Paul to avoid a repeat of his naughtiness, else some horrible occurrences await him. Let's hear him out. Before, you know, it was okay, but you don't know what you got in store, baby. You got to face the God of war. And get ready, baby. Fire in the house. <laughs> <laughs> In one of the most talked about boxing bouts in recent history, both fighters have had so much to say about each other as well. From slight digs to fired shots and mind-blowing insults, the baddest man on the planet and the problem child have caused more problems than anyone saw coming. A fight between an old man and a young blood is known to be relatively less chaotic and brutal than fights between contemporaries. But with how the build-up to the July 20th matchup is going, Mike Tyson has been proving himself ageless creating a buildup that won't only last in memories, but will make the longtime barrier of age a stepping stone for those who have been hindered by it. This is, however, not so good for Jake Paul, who is known to fight mainly elderly men. And with the look of things, many fans have demanded that he gets into retirement if he loses his match against Iron Mike Tyson, a man who will be 58 years old and 30 years older at the time of the matchup. Regardless, Tyson has been firing his fierce verbal weapon, and a brave and violent Jake Paul has also not been having any of it. But the question being asked in respect to the problem child is how many shots he can hold within himself, as Mike Tyson hasn't been the only one coming for him. Fans and professionals in the world of combat sports have had their say about the fight, and most especially about Jake Paul. Many things about his person seem to be immensely irksome. However, his most recent shot has come from his upcoming opponent, Mike Tyson. Ever since his matchup against Mike Tyson, Jake Paul has shown himself more disrespectful and impolite. It's been expected that with the caliber and age of his next opponent, he would maintain a rather calm and clever approach to the fight, giving respect to Tyson where it's due. It's often said that respect isn't forced, but earned. And when it comes to that, the name Mike Tyson has earned his respect from everyone in the world of boxing, especially those of the new generation. Tyson reigned as the undisputed world heavyweight champion from 1987 to 1990. Shockingly, he won his first 19 professional bouts by knockouts and 12 of them in the first round and remains the youngest ever boxer to win the world heavyweight title at 20 years, 4 months and 22 days. He also holds the record for being the first heavyweight boxer to simultaneously hold the WBA, WBC and IBF titles as well as the only heavyweight to unify them in succession. Talk about respect again. And Mike Tyson has not only earned it, but his achievements command it as well. Hence, every move from Jake Paul to engage in a verbal battle against him is deemed disrespectful. Shut the fuck up. I wish you had kids so I could stomp on their testicles. Stomp on their testicles. What? Have a nice fight, Jake. F*** off. F*** off. You can't last two minutes in my world, bitch. I'll fucking kill you up. Now, Mike Tyson has come for Jake Paul after Paul's recent Instagram post aimed at mocking Mike Tyson's training footage. Having seen the footage, Tyson has given Jake Paul a stern warning ahead of their bout. Recently, Mike Tyson came on an interview with Patrick Bet David on the Valuetainment podcast and revealed the latest sense he had for Jake Paul. I need Jake to understand and remember something. Perhaps he's forgotten so quickly. I fought over 50 fights and featured in over 50 face-offs. And if there's something people know well, it's that I take face-offs seriously, Iron Mike Tyson said. Mike Tyson bragged about fighting over 50 fights while his opponent can only boast of just 10 less than Tyson's number of fights at age 20.
Besides, what's more interesting is that Mike Tyson fought more fights in 1986, the year became the youngest world champion than Jake Paul has in his entire career. Tyson seemed to have so much information for Jake that he had to dig up old memories to accurately pass across the information and ensure there's no misunderstanding. Tyson continued, I'm a brutal animal during face-offs, but I've chosen to take this with levity. After all, I'm not getting younger, and I'm being a more responsible man than I've ever been. Tyson then gave an exact description of what his buildup with Jake Paul has seemed like. So far, you'll notice I only come for you with replies and reactions to your stupidity. You don't see me come and drop words first, but the idiot in Jake Paul keeps showing up because he won't keep quiet. A wise man would wonder whatever his opponent is doing silently, that could make him talk less. But you're an embodiment of foolishness, so you don't understand. Next, Mike Tyson confirmed having seen the latest video posted by Paul on Instagram and brutally trolled Jake Paul for it. I've seen his video mimicking my training, but his idiotic self was partying. I love when I see people display the extent of their retardness. He should keep partying. He could train or not train if he likes, but one thing is what I have to say to him. Mike Tyson then went on to pass a firm message to Jake Paul, sending him a serious warning that could attract dire consequences if unheeded too. Tyson said, Jake, here's my warning to you. July 20th is four months away and that's still a long time. A very long time and I really don't care. But ensure I see no post or hear any of your statements relating to me. Say nothing about me. Act like you have no opponent. Don't dare react to my statements or make anything close to a comment about me. Tyson's earning didn't end without a consequence, exception, and consideration. Until we face off physically, let me hear nothing from you. I can only permit you in a physical face off. And if you go against my warnings, I'll tear you into pieces and ruin everything about you. Mike Tyson's warnings for Jake Paul came after he stumbled on Jake Paul, where he mimicked the recent training videos of Mike Tyson, where Tyson has been seen making daily countdowns before showing footage of his training for the day. Notably, this isn't the first time Jake Paul has mimicked Tyson. In fact, the very video Jake Paul released to announce the match, a large part of it was his mimic of Tyson. He mimicked Tyson's earbite of Evander Holyfield. He mimicked Tyson's photos and videos with his Tigers. He also mimicked several of Tyson's speeches in the video, proving Tyson's statement about him true. As Tyson said one time, he seemed to have run out of content ideas and could only mimic the boxing legend to have something to put up. However, if Jake Paul thinks he's playing mind games with Mike Tyson, then Tyson's the wrongest person to do that with. In the most recent video, and in his naughty efforts to keep making the matchup the most talked about and controversial boxing match of the year, Jake Paul mimicked Mike Tyson's training footage, but rather than train, he partied. He's revealed that he plans to add a legendary name to his resume as he faces 58-year-old Mike Tyson in an eight-round exhibition with a heavyweight limit. However, these actions have been negating that, with the older man seeming the most serious of both fighters. Tyson had begun training for his first boxing match since facing Roy Jones Jr. in a November 2020 exhibition, which was scored a draw, and Iron Mike Tyson looked impressive for his age in the minimal footage released thus far, but fans have questioned if he can sustain his ferociousness for several rounds. But recently, Paul posted a video on Instagram of him hopping off a private jet and saying, Day one of training. The YouTuber turned boxer then immediately drank champagne before showing highlights of a party he attended with his girlfriend, Yuta Leerdam. Laughably, while these actions don't portray either of the couple as being serious with what they have in front of them, the both of them have dreams of being the number one in their sport in two years' time. Paul has launched an ambitious pursuit to become a boxing world champion, while his partner, on the other hand, is looking to compete in the Milano Cortina Winter Olympics in 2026. At the moment, he is preparing to take on and defeat heavyweight icon Mike Tyson in a blockbuster summer clash. However, it remains a big question whether this unlikely route would help fulfill his own ambitions of world glory. But he insisted, alongside his partner, a speed skating world champion in 2020 and 2023, they can become a new sport power couple following in Simone Biles and Jonathan Owens's, or Andre Agassi and Steffi Graf's fashion. In the latest episode of BS with Jake Paul, Leardom revealed she had set the world record for the fastest time to perform 1,000 meters in speed skating, to which Paul replied, 
I'm so proud of you. He then continued, I think it is cool. I was thinking about it the other day when you go to the Winter Olympics in two years. However, with Jake Paul's latest promotional content where he was seen mimicking Tyson, fans had mixed reactions to him trolling Tyson on Instagram. One huge fan of Tyson who can't wait to see a knockout against Jake Paul said, if I were him, I quit the challenge because Mike Tyson is winning him in the second round. Another fan emphasized Jake Paul's laziness and lack of seriousness about the match, claiming Jake Paul avoids his contemporaries because of this. I guess that's the reason he doesn't fight people his age. A rather analytic fan gave reasons for Mike's early training and Jake Paul's partyings, claiming Mike needed to do more work to get in shape, in comparison with Jake Paul who had his last fight just three weeks ago. I don't think people remember that Jake's last fight was three weeks ago, whereas Mike's last fight was three years ago. It's obvious that Jake would be on vacation while Mike would start training right about now. One fan making excuses for Jake Paul and talking about what is relatively unknown and untrue said, Mike hit the pads for a couple of seconds and then went to bed. Jake filmed a video for a couple of minutes after a workout, then workout again. Expectedly, some fans would come for Tyson, pointing to his age as a disadvantage that will ruin his chances in the matchup. They really trying to push this narrative that Mike has a chance against Jake this a prize fight. There's no way Mike wins. He's 57. The truth, however, remains that Mike Tyson must have had his cup of fury filled to the brim and wouldn't want an extra drop from Jake Paul as that would make him overflow with anger and no one would want to see that. Several memories of Mike Tyson going into the ring full of anger can be recalled, but the most outstanding of all was his first title fight against Burbick. I just wanted to decimate him, said Tyson, of the fight that saw him crowned boxing's youngest ever world heavyweight champion, age 20. People said I was fighting tomato cans. Easy fights. I wanted to really hurt him, said Iron Mike. Mission accomplished. His opponent, Jamaican WBC title holder Trevor Burbick, probably knew he was in for a rough night from Tyson's menacing glare as he entered the ring. There was more than just fight night focus behind it. Tyson later admitted that he had contracted the sexually transmitted disease gonorrhea in the buildup, but he said, I was too embarrassed to go to a doctor at the time, so I just had to endure the pain. Soon it was Burbick's turn to endure pain. Tyson's reputation preceded him. His management hit upon the idea of sending video cassettes of a teenage Tyson's early stoppages to sports writers and TV personalities across the USA. Soon, these highlights, which were visceral and bludgeoning footage of blunt force trauma, were everywhere. Tyson had essentially gone viral in a pre-internet age. In 1986, the heavyweight belts were split between underachieving or unexciting boxers, and fans were desperate to see this brash young slugger from the harsh streets of Brownsville, Brooklyn, clean up the division. Burbick was first up. The 32-year-old, a 3-1 underdog at the Las Vegas Hilton, had tried to land a psychological blow by choosing plain black trunks for the fight. As champion, he had the first choice of attire, with the challenger supposed to wear a different color. Burbick picked black because part of Tyson's appeal was his old-school look. No glitzy robe or frilled shorts, he entered the ring draped in a plain white towel with black shorts and boots. Mike Tyson changed the face of boxing when he burst onto the scene. If the idea had been to unsettle Tyson, it failed. Tyson ate a $5,000 fine and wore his black trunks anyway. Incredibly, this fight in November was Tyson's 13th of the year. Another sign of the old school approach his handlers were taking, keeping the red hot prospect active. His overall record was an imposing 27 wins in 27 matches with 25 knockout victories. Having Tyson stay busy also helped distract him from an intense grief. His mentor, Custamato, had died 12 months earlier, age 77. The Italian-American was more than just a trainer. He had become Tyson's legal guardian, adopting him after the death of Tyson's mother in 1982. Tyson had lived with D'Amato and his wife in Catskill, New York. In a sense, D'Amato was using Tyson. He saw the boxer's astonishing power and build and realized he could shape him into the perfect champion. But he had also been a stabilizing presence in Tyson's chaotic young life, spent in and out of juvenile detention. Mike Tyson at his prime is still one of the most fearsome boxers of all time. Burbick was most famous for defeating Muhammad Ali in Ali's last professional fight. But even that decision win over a faded 39-year-old worked against him here. Ali attended the Burbick-Tyson fight and, 
as if any more fuel needed to be added to the fire, gave Tyson a pre-fight pep talk. I can remember Ali coming to me after he was introduced in the ring. He came and said, get him for me. Tyson idolized Ali and his resolve hardened. I was angry and looking for revenge, he said. It certainly looked that way as Tyson, who had prowled the ring during the introductions, stared bullets at Burbick as they came together for the final instructions. Burbick was either intimidated by Tyson or got his pre-fight tactics disastrously wrong. His best punch was a stiff jab, a handy weapon for a 6 feet 2 inch heavyweight facing a boxer whose official height of just over 5 feet 11 inches always appeared a very optimistic figure, not that anyone chose to correct him. Yet Burbick met Tyson head on. It made for a thrilling first minute as Burbick briefly gave as good as got, but it proved a terrible strategy. Tyson crouching and bobbing in the style taught by D'Amato was soon punishing Burbick with compact brutal hooks from either hand. The champion, upright and awkward, was flailing about as an electric crowd with Eddie Murphy and Sylvester Stallone at ringside roaring its approval. Somehow, Burbick made it through the first round on his feet and, showing considerable bravado, jutted his chin out to Tyson before retreating to his corner and a bollocking from trainer Angelo Dundee. Tyson didn't need the invite to target Burbick's chin. The bombardment continued in the second round until Burbick crashed to the canvas. He got up quickly and gamely fought on until an eye-catching finishing sequence. With 30 seconds to go in the round, Tyson narrowly missed an uppercut that might have beheaded Trevor before a chopping left hook to the temple caused a dazzling delayed reaction. Burbick fell flat on his back, tried to rise fast, but his rubbery legs failed him and he careered into the ropes. A second attempt to get up saw him stumble across the ring and fall for a third time, his knee-high socks making the sequence look even more bizarre. When he finally regained his feet, Lane waved the fight off, grabbing Burbick to prevent him tumbling down again. Tyson opened his arms and shrugged to trainer Kevin Rooney, greeted manager Jim Jacobs with a kiss on the lips, while promoter Don King cracked a grin wider than the Las Vegas Strip. At the post-fight press conference, a bare-chested Tyson delivered quotes as fearsome as his shots in the ring. I was throwing hydrogen bombs. Every punch was with murderous intention, he said. Tyson would rapidly unify the heavyweight title, picking up all of the belts before demolishing linear champion Michael Spinks in just 91 seconds in 1988. He was still two days shy of his 22nd birthday, yet a line from HBO analyst Larry Merchant on the night of the Burbick destruction proved prescient. The only person who can beat Mike Tyson is Mike Tyson himself, said Merchant. When a poorly prepared Tyson lost to 42, one underdog Buster Douglas in 1990, that proved exactly the case. Stripping him of his aura of invincibility, Tyson was never the same afterwards, but for several fights, including against Burbick, he was an irresistible force and the most spectacular heavyweight to ever lace gloves. In similar vein, should Jake Paul neglect Tyson's instructions to stay quiet and add any more fury to his already filled cup, despite Tyson's age at the moment, he might be seeing something more deadly than the Mike Tyson versus Trevor Burbick match. The world of boxing recognizes that whenever Mike Tyson gives a warning, it's adhered to. Perhaps because Jake Paul is new into boxing or because of his love for causing problems, the problem child would likely go against Tyson's warnings. And right there is where it gets more interesting. If you enjoyed watching this video, kindly react by clicking the like button. For the very best updates on events, moments, actions and news in the world of boxing, stay connected to us by subscribing to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to turn on notifications to get alerted when we drop quality contents like this. Until next time, peace out.